All right, always a good idea to save your work after you've completed some steps. So I have it saved as a PSD. I was able to put all of the, the component layers of the head into this shared head folder by using the folder icon to create a folder and then dragging those folders into it. That makes it easy for me to just select the whole folder. As long as I turn auto select off, then I can move it as one combined entity, even though there's still separate layers to be worked on. And I can put it, you know, into the right place when the time comes and assemble it onto the chassis of my, of my full creature. Now there's a lot of work to be done with the head to be my satisfaction, the coloring and the, the blending of these things together. But the more important thing is to get this head to attach to a body and to continue with the anatomy. So now I'm going to build the next section. And I have a few references I thought might be useful. I liked, I usually like to have references of the top part of the body that show the collarbone and the joints together with a neck I can use. So I rotated this image of the seal and I'm going to take a lot of overlap. Of the neck and body and even of the hips. And even though we're covered with this sand texture. This was the reference I found that I think can work. I'm going to move it behind the head layer. And then I'm going to move them both off to the side so I can still reference my image. Oops. So I accidentally brought the body into the head group and I want it separate. So I can select them individually. There we go. And now I can use Control T and shrink and shape the body to work better with that head. Maybe even distort it a little bit. And see what I can get away with with this anatomy. So I want to tilt that collarbone. So that's angled the same way the head is, like that. But then I'm realizing that I don't want to um, give myself the extra headache of trying to put the hands up to the head. That's going to take more compositing. and finding more elements than I want to spend the time finding. I want, want it to still be around five, five elements composited. So then I check the quality of this reference, and it's good and sharp. So now I just have a lot of overlap there to work with. All right. So if I want, I can cut it out a little bit better. But still not a clean polish, just like if you're welding a car together you have all of these kind of rough welds that then at the very end get us smoothed out and finished. So we don't worry about the tool marks yet. And obviously the coloring and the lighting we haven't worked with at all yet. Okay, next. I need the feet. 
But I don't really have a bottom of the body. I don't really have hips yet. But these feet were hard to find. And they're missing something. And they're also just straightforward. They're not kind of angled to match my sketch. And that's the full photo, but it does have a little bit of a bottom, which is kind of nice. And it's nice and high resolution. So the first thing I might do is just try to control T it still as a smart object and change it's positioning just a little bit using distort. Sometimes you can use perspective for this, but I find like distort gives you the best overall control. Make one foot look like it's a little bit closer to the viewer than the other. And then you can always use warp to kind of fine tune. Some of the elements. Tuck that back a little bit. Okay, so now, how can I finish off this, this part that's missing? Well, what I'm going to do is bring in that reference again and then do some internal compositing. So this time I'm going to steal this toe, which is unwarped, from the reference I just brought in. I'm going to hit Action Key J, Command J on a Mac, to isolate that. And then I'm going to do Control T. Make a transform box to flip it horizontally. And then work with scale and the free transform options. to make that my believable foot. And so even though this is copy and pasted from something else that's already in the image, because I am distorting it, warping it, flipping it, and then blending it in with my soft edged 100% opaque eraser. It will look like a very distinct foot. <laughs> So it won't look like I just copied it from the other side. So there's something that can happen. I call it, um, you don't want things looking too copy pasty, right? So even though this here is the same as this, they look very different based on how I transformed them. And now I can merge these two layers together by holding down shift and selecting both of them and then going to Layer, Merge Layers. So now it's all one layer to be messed with. And that way I can kind of cut out the feet and the bottom with a lot of overlap. And now they're a much improved reference. They're a better pose. They're complete. So even though their feet were hard to find, 
I was able to use compositing to kind of build them into something useful. So internal compositing. Oh, I lost a chunk that I need though. There we go. Remember, you can always add to a selection. I just accidentally jogged in here. Zigged when I should have zagged. Okay. Now I can move that behind the body that I have. And I can start thinking, okay, well, how will that, that piece come in? Well, what I really need are some hips, right? You can't really cheat hips. And so this kind of suggests hips, but I think I want it to be a little bit rounder and, you know, plumper looking. So that I can go to some of my other body reference. And there is this one, which is all nice and sharp focus. I liked the wet fur look. There's also this kind of lump here. So sometimes you can use reference in unusual ways. So I'm going to bring that on. And I'm just going to get a big chunk of round body here. With some overlap. but not too much because I have to kind of see how the shape works with the other layers around. So trim it up a little bit. Command J to duplicate it. And now even before I move it in, I know that this is really dark compared to what I'm working with. So I'm gonna go immediately to levels adjustments and I'm gonna brighten the midtones just so I can see it a little bit better for what it can be. Then maybe deepen the shadows a bit, brighten the highlights a bit, just so I can really understand what the light source is and what the potential is. And I think what I wanna use is right in here. Okay, so what I'll do is I will flip it vertically and then rotate it. I think this right here is going to be my belly and hips. So that I can see it a little bit better, I'm going to go ahead and cut out the part I think is most useful that overlaps with the rest. Duplicate that. Try moving that on top. Oh, wrong layer. So we get a lot of practice at organizing layers, right? And I like that little crease that's in there. It was the back crease of the seal, but now it's going to become kind of the chest crease of my Psyduck. And already I can start with my eraser, large, 100%, and I can start blending these textures together. I want it probably about 500 pixels big. Just take off that hard, hard edge at the top. Then I can take down the opacity a little bit. I just want to reveal the other flipper. 